Hello everyone, Corey Taylor here. Welcome to a very, very special radio special. Uh, we put the special in special. <laughs> Love it. The Hardwired to Self-Destruct radio special is my absolute wonderful happiness to introduce the guys from Metallica, James Hetfield. Howdy. Lars Ulrich. Hello there. Robert Trujillo. Hola. Kirk Hammett. Salutation. Yes. So let's, let's just break it down, and I know you're so sick of hearing this. Um, so instead of saying eight years, we're going to say it's been 2,989 days since the release of Death Magnetic. Mm-hmm. In that time, you have been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, headlined the Big Four series of shows with Slayer, Megadeth, and Anthrax, wrote and recorded an album with the Mighty Mighty Lou Reed, celebrated a 30th anniversary, launched your own festival, the Orion Music Festival, starred in your own 3D movie, Through the Never, became the first band to play on all seven continents in a calendar year, and you were the first rock band to headline the new U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and people say I'm busy. You guys are nuts. You make me look like a chump. And we showered once, too. <laughs> yeah, a couple times. You got the shower out. I like it. With all of that going on, when did you even have time to get together to put together new music? When you hear that list, of course it took eight years. But knowing you guys, it probably took 10 seconds to kind of put you know good stuff together. Probably more than 10 seconds, oh, okay. I'd say. 15. But it was like every other day or something. Whenever we had some time off, you know, we got HQ here, which is awesome. Yeah, this is our yeah. this is our hang. This is the most comfortable place for Metallica ever is right here. So whenever we come here, it feels it feels good to be here, and it's the best place to be, just like comfortable with yourself and be expressive. So yeah. whenever we're here, we just start start doing some stuff. Makes sense. Know? Makes sense. I mean, the good stuff comes from being relaxed anyway, right? I mean. Well, don't you think it started with yeah, I mean, with Lords of Summer or no? Yeah, I mean, there's just so much. I mean, this day and age, basically everything, and I'm sure it's the same in your band, everything yeah. we do just gets recorded. Yeah. Does it see that guy there? There's always somebody with a camera. <laughs> right. Uh, there's some, always somebody recording something. So No one's it, recording this, right? <laughs> apart from this. <laughs> I hope not. Mother beep! Well, somebody's there, supposed you know, to be recording. <laughs> I'm getting a grin from the control room. But, That's you know, never a good sign. Every sound check, every rehearsal every jam every you know warm-up in the tuning room on the road everything's recorded so there's always especially with james i mean he's so prolific every time he picks up a guitar there's just one great riff after another yeah and so when it's time to (laughs) kind of create new music it's like first you got to sort of start just listening to stuff and this time around since death magnetic like been many years there was 1500 ideas that had literally been logged yeah and so i spent uh a little bit of time a couple summers ago kind of listening through all those ideas kind of weeded out what i thought was a good couple starting places and then like james is saying a couple years ago when we were doing the metallica by request we did like a whole year's worth of just metallica by request dates and uh so there was 18 slots 17 that the fans picked and then one uh, slot that we picked for a new song and that okay. was where lords of summer yeah yeah it, we wrote lords of summer especially for that tour and then when we were done with that tour later that year, we started getting to work on the rest of the songs. Nice, very cool, very cool. I want to talk about the. I want to get into the the new the new album, which I got to hear by the way, and I, I loved it. I mean, I loved Death Magnetic, but this, for some reason, had everything that I liked about Magnetic, but also everything that I liked about the older stuff. It starts out with Hardwired. To me, it's almost like where magnetic left off with my apocalypse it's like it it just punches the crap out of you and then this album kind of does that same thing every album has kind of had that intense epic vibe kind of like with with battery and everything like that musical passage that kind of warms you up to get to it where this just kind of comes out and just like you know so was that was that a conscious thing or was that just something that happened well i think that was the last song to be written actually oh out of all the stuff you know putting together gosh 18 songs i think yeah we just knew that we needed something that said hello yeah yeah (laughs) we're here (laughs) we have enough intros (laughs) yeah (laughs) we've got (laughs) quite a few you and, and they're great for singers yeah. maybe yeah. you know yeah. they say okay take a little rest here <laughs> but yeah something that just came out and just you know okay yeah they're, they're happening they're happening that was the last thing to be written and the first song to be put out there 
and probably the most different of all the songs on the record. Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, almost it, like an afterthought in a way. Cause we it's were, a summation kind yeah, of. Yeah, we were basically done with the record. Yeah, it's it's cool, we sat though, down especially. We sat down to take stock of it. I was like, I don't think there's an opening song on this. You know, right. what, where do we start? It was like, so we just put that together. The, you know, the blueprint was short, sweet, and to the uh, point, like James is saying, no five minute epic acoustic intro and all that just yeah, yeah. hit him you know with the first punch so it was but it was basically like an afterthought so it was cool and that one was 10 minutes yeah probably <laughs> it's probably I mean, it's like hello we're kind of good at this yeah short fast well you know what the the great thing about uh hardwired is is just how much all the radio stations picked up on it and right yeah it. yeah because you know that song i mean you know it's a distant relative from it's just about anything on Kill 'Em All. Yeah, and exactly. And when Kill 'Em All came out, radio ran the other way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so we put this uh, song out, which is like, you know, like I say, a distant cousin of something. You know, it sounds like Whiplash or something. Yeah, And radio yeah. is just all over it's crazy. it. Yeah. So. It actually went to number one <laughs> on the rock tracks. I mean, it's pretty crazy that it's a so song killer. like that, yeah. 35 years later, like Kirk is saying, could actually be like number one. Right. That's crazy. Uh, three songs have been made available to fans prior to the release, the third being Atlas Rise another killer tune on there lyrically there's a sense of loneliness to that song like a loner vibe not so much loneliness but just because me- metal's always been kind of the music for the loner you know you can listen to it and you can kind of try and find who you are inside of it is that something that you guys have always identified with i don't think that for me that'll never change yeah me especially neither. with me that, neither with the generation you know, whether it's the Deep Purple Black Sabbath, the Led yeah. Zeppelin generation, or whether it's the Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, uh, Motorhead, Saxon, Phil, and all the rest of them. Yeah. I mean, I'll always be, forever, we'll always be a fan of those generations because it was what what we grew up with. It was yeah. what made us who we are. It was what sort of, it's in our DNA. So I'll always be a fan of, of that stuff and music in general. I don't think for me... 35 years later no matter what metallic has become or any of that it not, that hasn't changed yeah yeah you know i mean i mean for me i mean i'm still a, a fan of of that same period that Lars was just talking about in the 70s you know early 80s yeah and and for me you know i've been so influenced and so inspired by the music that was made back then and now as you know a working musician 35 years 40 years or so that that period of music has become a point of reference for me too. Yeah. You know, when I just uh, I need some inf- in inspiration or some uh, inf- influence or just even information. Yeah, you know, I go to that that time period and I feel like a fan. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, Corey, I like what you said about the loner thing. And there's a part of me that loves being a loner, just yeah. loves it, yeah, and <laughs> craves it. And that whole lone wolf attitude is just it's so. I don't know. It's it's comforting. Yeah. But then the other side of that is, you know, I've got the weight of the world on me. I have to do everything myself. Yeah. And I'm a martyr now. And then yeah. I become a victim and all of this crap. So you're right when you, when you say that loner part and the responsibility around it too. Yeah. I think that's that's kind of you 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 sum the song up. Metallica are known for iconic album covers and artwork. What are the origins of the art for Hardwired to Self Destruct? Two herrings. Still haven't figured out who's who. Walking to a bar. Oh. There's a herring and another herring. One's <laughs> Danish, one's Russian. I met those guys, I don't know, like four or five years ago uh, doing a shoot for something. A couple of years ago when Jess and I got hitched up in the mountains, um, we asked them to come up and shoot the wedding. For a wedding present, they gave this crazy picture of the two of us superimposed on top of each other. Yeah. This is this awesome thing, and I showed it to James, I think, up at the wedding. So it's like one day... When we do something in the future, we should get these guys to do all of us on top of each other. Two years later, they came out here this summer, uh, right in that space, and they shot all of us doing all that crazy superimposed stuff. And we saw the pictures, and we gave them to um, David Turner, who was doing all our artworks and done everything for the last 10 years. And they just thought those images were so cool that they made the cover, and it became basically the whole package and it's become not just the package but the kind of the whole i guess campaign for lack of a better word so yeah. we didn't know it was going to be that cool but uh it's those images are so striking and unique and original and it's really different from anything we've done before yeah so it just feels really cool there were things that we had checked out prior to that um different ideas and then that one just popped and it was yeah. so powerful that it was a no-brainer when we were in central america there were these big massive 
uh, posters of that image, and James goes, look, it's your face on the cover. I go, no, no, that's not my face. Well, no, that's your eyebrow. Wait a minute. No, that's Kirk's <laughs> nose. And uh, <laughs> those are your lips. No, that's your tooth. It was, I always thought <laughs> that was you. He's like, no, that's you. That's what? not me. That's no. you. That's I, know that, I know that that's my tongue. And that's, all, that's what I know is for sure me. Those aren't pillows. <laughs> <laughs> um, the final track on the album is Spit Out the Bone, which is probably my second. It's a fight for that and uh, Moth to the Flame. is my like Those are my two favorites uh, on the album. What made that song feel like it was the, the end? Like, I mean, because I mean, we'll talk about sequencing in a little bit, but what did that did that song kind of immediately stick out as like, ooh, this, because I know working on our album, sometimes I'll hear a song, I'll be like, that's definitely the album closer. Mm. Was that kind of the vibe with, with this one? Uh, no. It was all kind of a blur. It didn't become the closer until Hardwired became the opener. Ah, uh, okay. Because at some point, I was even toying with potentially putting it up at the front. And, yeah. But it's really long, and it's just got kind of a life of its own. It didn't seem like it was the opening statement to this to this record so uh but when hardwired was given birth to no. and spit out the bone parked itself <laughs> in the back as the end well that's it i mean it was a total kismet I mean, it makes a lot of sense it's a damn good tune but i think at the same time with with spit out the bone because i feel the same way that you do it's it's probably my favorite song yeah it has this personality and i think at least for me i know in working with greg fiddleman when we were tracking and stuff it was the one that looked it seemed like the challenge, you know, it was like, you know, the, the, in, in, I feel that James's vocals really brought the, you know, th that song together and the personality yeah. of it. Yeah. Because it was just like this wild roller coaster ride and there's this bass break and there's this and that. And I know, and I, Lars seemed to have a really great vision of this. And, um, and then in the end, it just blossomed. And, yeah. and I was like, this is so cool. Yeah. But at first I was like, what is this? Right. <laughs> it's driving me nuts. No, it's definitely, it's definitely. Like, epic. Those, those I mean, types it's... of songs can go. I mean, it's a real fine line when, when you go on that kind of a journey. <laughs> yeah. I'm Corey Taylor here, and I have the entire band here with me to talk about the new album and Metallica's plans in 2017 and beyond. Okay, speaking of touring, you guys, you, you brought up the three-year tour. Do you plan on touring this for three years? Can I catch you 17 times on this three-year tour? Well, we kind of have a new, in the last 10 years, we've kind of, figured out a new way that works for us which is we tour in um, much smaller increments yeah, so we yeah. basically don't go on the road now for longer than two weeks at a time yeah so when you go on the road for two weeks at a time and we kind of put we force these breaks in there to make sure that we don't go off the deep end and that yeah. we don't push ourselves physically to a place where we we can't sort of uh control it or contain it um so now it's like basically you know what Touring two week increments, that's fine. So whether it takes two years, three years, four years, it doesn't matter. Yeah. As long as we find the right balances, we'll see yeah. how long it goes. I think a real important part of that too is recharging the battery and you know, yeah. being a singer, as you might know. Oh, and yeah. you know, oh, yeah. everyone's got their own kind of issues with body at some point. It's yeah. like, ah, you know, I'm I, I don't like being ninety percent. I just don't. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I would rather be 110% less often, yeah. and that's kind of what we're doing. Well, I mean, you know, the important thing is just going forward and making sure that you're you're able to, like, stay together. I mean, for me, it seems like all my moving parts are breaking down. <laughs> my, my knees, my <laughs> wrists, my elbows, my shoulders, my brain. My yeah, puppy. Yeah, my puppy. Yeah, the puppies can't get the lickings anymore. Yeah, I can't get all, as many li licks as I, I usually can. <laughs> But you know, oh. it's just moving forward. You do, you have to do the maintenance so that you can, like, yeah. you know, look forward with with a good feeling exactly. that you can like actually pull it off. You know, for the next three years. Because whether we it's like it or not, fair. I just realized what? it's not fair. You have a twenty five year old drummer. That's not fair. Well, hey, it's trust okay. me, it, I got to keep up with him, man. It <laughs> sucks. I, at first, I was like, this is awesome. But by the end of the tour, I was like, God. Damn it! Yeah. This is stu this was the dumbest thing we've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, Jay. No, it actually wasn't. Um, we're gonna wrap it up 
Um, but I, first of all, I want to thank you guys for taking the time to, to do this. Thank you. Thanks for coming up. Uh, thank you. I, yeah. I really appreciate it. I, re- I had a good time. I hope I didn't butcher this. Um, and I, I have one last introspective question because that's that's how we that's how we do these things. These it's, <laughs> this is the inside the actor studio portion of the show. But of course, and we've touched on this a little bit. What are the biggest lessons you've learned over this career? And would you do anything differently at all? Let me start with James. Oh wow! Don't worry so much. <laughs> Don't worry so much about what's happening because there's always some kind of silver lining. At the end of that. Yeah. Something good comes out of something bad. I mean, it really does. And uh, I would say, what was the other question? Uh, uh, would you do you do have anything? any memory left? Would Is you, that the question? I, I think it was. <laughs> I, I'm trying to remember what I just said. I can't remember. Would you do anything differently? I can honestly say no. Yeah. Because we're here because of all the stuff from before. And, you know, things happen for a reason. I'm not proud of everything uh, for sure. Mm. Uh but I'm proud that we've survived, or at least I have as well. Nice. Lars? Probably opening my eyes and just taking it all in, allowing myself to take it all in. When I think back to the early days, I just felt like I was so busy, always looking ahead, that I never took in the the moment, the present. Um, it was just always on to the next thing, always on to the next thing. And now I just try to revel more in in. in in the present. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm like James, I, I wouldn't rewrite any of it. I think that looking back on the 35 years, um, and I appreciate what you said before, I, I do feel that we can pretty much hold our heads up high. We've always done the right thing yeah. at the moment, whatever that was or whatever felt right. Sometimes later you'll sit there and go like, what were we thinking? But I always come back to, I know at that time, it felt like the right thing to do, yeah. and if you can, if you can stay true to that, that you know, you you're when you write the rules, you can change the rules. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're true to yourself in whatever moment, then I think you're doing the best you can. Nice, Rob. You know, for me, it's like I'm living my dream. You know, ever since I was a little kid, just playing air guitar, or <laughs> air saxophone, or air drums, whatever. You know, on the on the dining room table. You know, my parents were young enough to uh, to where they were really loving music of all yeah. styles. So to have that energy around me and then to play with my heroes, you know, whether it's Metallica or Ozzy Osbourne or, you know, uh, Mike Muir. Mike Muir, yeah, <laughs> suicidal. And to do it our own way, you know, and to experience that in this band and to see how the rules are made by us as artists creatively and there's a collaborative spirit here that's really special but there's also a support you know i uh, you know in, in working with these guys i'm learning still yeah. and that was the beautiful thing about working with you know of course mike or uh even jerry cantrell at one point yeah, you know you're yeah. learning from these people and um and i i just feel blessed so i wouldn't change anything because i'm living my dream kirk well you know what I, i've kind of uh learned and realized over the course of uh, of of our career is is that you know i just realized just recently that you know i was pretty much meant to play with these guys um i can't ever and i i have thought about it imagine myself in a better musical situation than i am now and you know for me uh, in retrospect I mean, I wouldn't change anything. I wouldn't change any of the blood, any of the sweat, any of the tears that we have been through because it's brought us to this point now. And I think that, you know, collectively, we're all better people for it. Yeah. And, you know, I, and that's all I have to say. And I'm just looking forward to the future and what, you know, Rob has to say. Or Rob just said, I totally feel wholeheartedly in. I mean, this, this you know, it feels like there's a lot of forward momentum yeah, pushing us, you know, and, and especially now that we're re- releasing an album, and we're about to go on tour, and uh, you know, as Lars says, you know, all physicalities aside, you know, mentally and physically, I think we're in a pretty good space, and it seems like we're moving forward in a pretty good space together now. Nice. Well, if the new album is a reflection of where you guys are at, you guys are on fire. So. Thank you for letting Thank me you. be a part of this. Thanks, Corey. No worries, man. Hope everyone enjoyed listening to this. Uh, 
it's uh it's been awesome dude you know but <laughs> yeah. this is Corey taylor signing off of the uh hardwired to self-destruct uh radio special hope you enjoyed it